All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Happy beginning of football season to you. Uh, Nebraska and Northwestern played in uh, Ireland, uh, which I guess happens a lot. I guess Notre Dame has done that a lot, but that was a good game. Uh, shout out to all the college football fans. Haiti college football before, but it's a great game now. Let's go ahead into it. In the NFL, uh, that Bills punter just got released. Um, I've seen some people on the internet, on the Twitters, already saying, you know, this is unfair. This is a double standard. You know, why does he not get his day in court? And Deshaun Watson um, did. And the reason is because he's a quarterback and his kid's a punter. You know, you uh, are as loyal as your options. If you have the option to get a punter, a punter is replaceable. You know, there are great punters. I mean, they do change things for you somewhat, but it's not the same as a great quarterback. Um, the better you are, the more talented you are, the more successful you are, the more things you can get away with in our culture and all cultures, truthfully. So that's just the way of the world. Um, I remember Jimmy Johnson talking about if he, he cut a player, the Dallas Cowboys coach, he famously cut a special teams player who fell asleep in a meeting room. And then the media asked him, would you cut Troy Aikman if he fell asleep in the meeting room? What would you do? And he said, no, I would tap Troy and tell him, Troy, wake up. Of course, there are double standards for different players. A more successful, talented player is going to give more leeway than another one. That's just the way life works. So, um, again, I don't know why the NFL is in this business, but it is what it is. Uh, the Buccaneers, to talk about just football, they, I think they lost another lineman today. Um, you know, this preseason has just been just been brutal to them. They lost another uh, center. Um, you know, finding centers off the street is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and you, you know, you do want to, I don't know, we've shown the season that uh, Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl. They didn't play at all in the preseason. You know, no one played the preseason. The season just started. It was a date they played. College football doesn't have a preseason. I say that to say, you know, I think the the smart thing to do is not play your starters. Uh, you know, there's always that debate because, you know, guys get hurt and guys get hurt. It's football. But uh, I think the smart thing to do is not play your starters. And especially on a team where you got so many players hurt, but on the same side, when you have a new offensive line, you want them to jail. So you do need them to get reps. So that's that's a tough one. Uh, Geno Smith was named the starter. Uh, I don't know what Seattle's doing. I uh, Mike Labardi, a uh, former Cleveland Browns GM, said that he's heard that Jimmy G is probably going to go to Seattle when he gets released. That that's almost a done deal. So I did not talk about the Lakers trade of Pat Beverly uh, on his face. I like to trade. I think that when it comes to THT, I think that he can be a really good player. I think he could be. He's only twenty one. I think. And I've said this before, he's a boy, he, he has borderline all-star talent if you play him at the point guard position. He's not a wing. He's not a role player. Now, is he good enough to get the ball placed in his hands yet? Probably not. But Utah, a team that's tanking, and I'm going to talk about that here in a second. A Utah, a team that's tanking, um, can afford to give him the ball. And so let's see how, well, let's let him you know, spread his wings and let's see what he got. So I think that's a, a really interesting trade for both teams. I think Pat Beverly's good. It clears the books for the Lakers. So they have about 35 million in salary for the following season. Um, so I think as far as trades, I've heard them talk about Indiana making a trade for, Healed and Turner and then Indiana saying they want both second round picks, which is preposterous. And the Lakers is just stand pat. Hold that Westbrook contract, see what happens, play your best. And then obviously you have to trade him by the trade deadline, right? But I think that you need to wait till that comes out. Like this, Buddy Healed and Turner are not changing your life. They're not, they're not changing your life. Uh, I think if LeBron was 32. This would be a fine deal. 
for LeBron being 36, this deal would essentially mean that he is the alpha and omega on the offense, ball handling. There's no ball handling. There's no playmaking off the dribble when he's not on the court. At 30, at 30, uh, uh, what, 38? Same, a couple of months younger than me. That's untenable, you know? So um, I wouldn't even consider it. But uh, I talked about Utah and I talked about the Pacers. I think these teams and a lot of teams are in Oklahoma City now with the injury to Chet Holmgren. These teams are in a very peculiar situation because I've talked about this before. International players are the best players for small markets because they don't care about leaving. The only player that's ever international star who's acts out of a market was uh, <laughs> was Porzingis, and he acts out of New York, the biggest market. Right? They don't care where they play. They don't need the love of the NBA city because they have the love of their country. Right? Like Giannis is a god in Greece. Luka is a god where he's from. Uh, uh, Jokic, he's from Serbia. I got two Serbian in-laws that are close to me. They they love uh, Jokic. And these guys, they don't care about being on a yacht with little baby in the off season or being at this party who got invited to Michael Rubin party. They're in Europe. As soon as the season's over, they're gone. Remember, Jokic, you had to bring his MVP to him. He was in Serbia, Serbia riding horses. Same for Luca. Oh, Susie's over overseas. It's already been stated. Luca does not input in on personnel. He does not bother them with personnel. You guys make the season, the season, the teams. The only problem Luca ever had is with the coach, Carlisle, who's been famously ornery with a bunch of players. But Luca doesn't. He doesn't ask for input with the team. Giannis, they just want good. Give me a good team. I don't need to play with my friend that I played AAU with. That's another thing. You don't ever have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about, oh, me and uh, uh, what's the name? Our friends from our AAU days. They've been professionals since they're 15. They've been playing against whoever, whenever, you know? So, uh, you know, the Pacers are trying to drive a hard bargain. Uh, Utah's trying to drive a hard bargain. Uh, let's see who else is on this list. Uh, because a lot of these small market teams have a young core of guys, but a team like San Antonio, uh, a team, obviously Utah, Oklahoma City, Washington, even the Wizards, uh, you know, this might be, this is a Charlotte, uh, this is an opportune time, in my personal opinion, to tank because you can get a generational player and you know he will stay. They not tripping. Think about what I'm saying. They never ax out. The international stars, they never say, I want to play in a bigger market. I want to play with my bro. Uh, I want to, they don't do that. They're, they've been talking about Luka, been playing with uh, Dragic for years. The, the, the Mavericks passed on signing him. Luka didn't care. He's overseas chilling. So the Pacers are driving a hard bargain. The Utah's driving a hard bargain with the Knicks. They need to stop being short-sighted. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, having all these picks is nice, but getting a true superstar, a true top-five player to stay in Utah when he can leave, to stay in Sacramento, to stay in Indiana, to stay in San Antonio, it is going to be a very, very, very hard thing to do. So you better take advantage of this opportunity. It's once in a decade. Even those guys that I mentioned, Giannis was a mid uh, first round pick. Jokic was a late first round pick. I'm saying they didn't, you didn't know that these guys were superstars. These teams lucked out that they got superstars. Everyone's telling you this guy's the best prospect since LeBron. You better go get him. You better tank. Mercilessly tank. Indiana should just be running Halliburton, Matherin, and a bunch of who the fucks. Same for uh, <laughs> San Antonio Spurs said run a roster. You shouldn't even be able to recognize who's on the team. Like, who is that? So that's just my opinion on it. You know, so you're getting greedy with we want two first round picks. We want assets. All right. Okay.
you can have all the picks you want. If they're going to leave as soon as the, the money comes, then what does it matter? Uh, the Patriots, they've been looking nasty, man. They've been looking nasty. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start with them. Uh, with the season previews, I'm going to get them all done. I'm just going to have to cut it down to one question, one big question for all the teams in my prediction on the over-under. So I'm going to start dropping those uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. And I'm going to start a different channel. Um, the Game of Thrones content, that got erased off my hard drive too. So I have to redo it, but I'm just going to do it on a different one. It doesn't really make sense to put everything on this one. Uh, so I'll probably pop that up a little bit later. But, yeah, we back on the block. Normally, politics as usual going on. Sam Darnold got hurt four to six weeks. They was talking about bringing Cam back. Uh, it's bad times for my guy Cam, man. Is, it, is his career over? I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. All right, we're going to leave it there. The game is the game.